At the Carl Auto Group Collision Centers, we make it easy. Our expert Platinum iCard technicians use the latest technology and innovations to repair any make or model of vehicle on the road. Multiple locations in Iowa to get you back on the road faster. Get your free estimate today, in person or online at carlauto.com. Your dealer for life, it's the car away. The world will never be the same once you see it through the eyes of Fairway Frank. Frank, we'll sell London broils, New York strip steaks, pork chops, pork steaks. Frank's mama always said, life is like a T-bone steak. When you shop at Fairway, you know exactly what you're going to get. Hey guys, it's Chris Williams here with Cyclone Fanatic telling you about one of my favorite companies that I've worked with. And I hire them all the time. Country Landscapes, they're located up in Ames, but they have offices in eastern Iowa as well, over in North Liberty. Got one up in Clear Lake. I've hired Country Landscapes to do all the landscaping in my front yard, but I've also hired them to come over and give me advice on planting trees in my front and backyard. Stuff I don't really know about. But boy, the folks at Country Landscapes are experts in this field. They also have a skilled stone mason division that creates outdoor living and cooking spaces. Something I need to look into. Check them out. Country Landscapes. You want that dream fire pit in your backyard? That's an idea for this spring. Country Landscapes supporting our March Madness coverage of the Cyclones here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. Hello. Welcome to our basketball or men's basketball tournament preview show here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. My name is Chris Williams. I am joined by Rob Gray, and we are going to knock this thing out and really get really dig deep into everything coming up in the men's tournament. Of course, I'm already down here in Kansas City with the females tournament going on, and that is uh, it's been fantastic. I don't want to date this thing. I know a lot of you will be driving down on Tuesday. We are recording this thing on Monday evening, and the Iowa State women has just dismantled Oklahoma in their semis. So they will play on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. So we'll look forward to that. We'll have complete coverage of it. But, again, we wanted to uh, do a breakdown of the men's bracket for all of you driving down to Kansas City here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. All of our – Coverage uh, coming to you presented by our friends at the Fairway Meat and Grocery, Country Landscapes, Carl Auto Group. You just saw their ads play if you're watching on YouTube. I also want to thank our friends at the new sponsor for us here that we've never had, Central States Roofing. I uh, got to talk with these guys a little bit last week, and they were super excited to come on with us and uh, to sponsor our coverage of the Cyclones throughout the entire month of March. So we appreciate them at Central States Roofing. It's a great Cyclone company, uh, family-owned, locally-owned, dating back to 1968. So really cool stuff right there. Also, last but certainly not least, some guys I'm getting to know at Keen Project Solutions. Think different, thinkkeen.com. That's spelled K-E-E-N, think different, Think Keen. Dot com, a locally grown, uh, privately owned company that focuses on modern engineering, construction, serving agricultural, industrial, and commercial markets. We couldn't do what we do without all of our great sponsors. I bring in Rob Gray, who is still in Ankeny, but he will be heading down probably on Tuesday. We're getting all that figured out. And um, man, Rob, I was doing some research on... Iowa State's offensive woes earlier today, and it's it was worse than I thought, my friend. <laughs> in the last 10 games, or or since the Houston game, the last Houston game, Iowa State ranked something like 236th in offense, mm-hmm. if you would factor in those games. So it's it's gotten pretty bad. Having said that, uh, they, they still have only dropped one of those games. So that that's a good sign that you can be playing that poorly offensively and, and still winning basketball games in the best conference in America. However, it gets tougher now. 
and the NCAA tournament awaits. I think people care about Kansas City, but I don't think that they're as into Kansas City because it really doesn't matter. It feels like, you know, you're a two or three seed probably going to Omaha no matter what. Um, if you win the thing, I, I mean, you're not going to get pushed to the one line. But, man, it, I almost feel like now – my attitude's changed. It's like, God, I just want to see the ball go in the basket for this team before they get to the NCAA tournament. What say you? What's your thoughts real quickly on Iowa State before we dive into this bracket? Yeah, um, I agree. I will say that with the caveat that most of the teams they played during this stretch, I mean, Kansas State's a top 20 Ken Palm defense. BYU's 44. UCF's 12. Oklahoma's 32, I think. So you're playing really good defenses um, during the stretch. West Virginia, not so much, but they did put up 71 in that game. Um, and they were able to score 65 at Houston. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it, I think it's definitely worthy of concern given, I mean, uh, the sloppiness. We talked about it after the game in the Kansas State loss. That was kind of new. Um, just really sloppy in, in terms of taking care of the basketball. And... Um, you know, letting Kansas State kind of have its way um, for a good portion of that game before, you know, making it a game. But, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. They need to do something. I mean, even just to have one nice win. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, what is it again? It's either Texas or, um, or Kansas State. State again. Yeah. And either one of those would be would be good wins. Obviously, Texas would be a better win. Um, but, uh, again, Another, both good defenses. So we'll see what they've done. I'm sure TJ made a point to say that he thought the way that they were kind of lackluster and lost focus in the last game, that that felt like an outlier to him. And I think we trust him more than we to trust ourselves in terms of, you know, the bead he has on, on, on his team. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. It's always exciting. I mean, good weather, at least to start the tournament. Um, yes. A lot of fans will be excited to see what the women can do. Uh, 8 p.m. tomorrow night, but um, let's roll. Let's 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 get going. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for these March games. It's the probably my favorite time of the year to do this. I think. I mean, it just because it, there's just so much unknown. Um, especially like the you know like that women's game today was a great example. Going into it, I thought Iowa State had a decent chance to win. You know, they were I think like a four point underdog, but you know, you knew they were going to have a crowd advantage, all that stuff. And like, you just go out there and just kick their ass by 30. Like nobody saw that coming. And and that's what makes this time of year so much fun. So the, the, we really wanted to go through the bracket to help preview this tournament for people who are, are coming down to it. And, or maybe just like betting on the tournament or whatever, big 12 basketball fans. And that's what we're going to do for you guys here on this one. Probably less Iowa state talk and more, uh, conference-wide talk from a couple guys who watch this conference for a living, me and Rob. Um, I really don't want to spend too much, uh, really, any time on these first-round games. Again, the bracket's all screwed up because we're just not used to a 14-team league here. But you've got Oklahoma State, Central Florida, and then you've got Cincinnati, West Virginia. Um, I don't know. Like Central Florida would be the one team of those four that I don't think I'd want to mess with just because I think that they've got athletes. And in a weird way, they could probably give BYU a little bit of problems in game one on Wednesday. And the only reason I say that is just their length and their toughness. BYU, um, I think of, of all these teams, Rob, playing on Wednesday would be the one that I, I, I think could make a run and, and win this thing. What about you? You got BYU. I'll, I'll, read, I'll read you the matchups. BYU will play Oklahoma State or Central Florida. You've got Oklahoma and TCU in the 8 9 game. You've got Kansas State, Texas. Winner gets Iowa State. And then Kansas will play either West Virginia or Cincinnati. And I mean, I, I would take BYU to make a run in this thing over Kansas, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. Um, I don't think that's really close. Now, with the caveat, like you said, UCF played them close both times. And it, you you mentioned their length, their, their block percentage is elite. Um, again, 12th ranked adjusted defense of efficiency per Ken Palm. 
I, I think they get by Oklahoma State fairly comfortably, although that was a pretty close game, most recent meeting, and I think it ended up being six, seven, eight point game. But um, UCF certainly playing to prove something. I mean, to go on the road and win at TCU to close out the regular season um, was huge for them. To finish 7-11 in this league, I don't think anybody saw that coming. So they th- that could be a really entertaining game. And, again, and we, we know in conference tournament stuff can change. Oklahoma State might mm-hmm. play a great game. You know, West Virginia, Cincinnati might be a great, you know, who knows? You know, you got OU, TCU in, in the 9-8 game. Um, but in terms of teams – that are playing well and playing their game. The, the UCF doesn't have all the wins to show for it, but but yeah, you match them up with a BYU team that's elite offensively and darn good defensively too. That could be one of the more entertaining games uh, before um, we find out if Iowa State plays Texas or Kansas State for sure. Yeah, that would be the one that I would have circled. I mean, Oklahoma, TCU, both of those teams are playing for NCAA tournament stuff, so that that's an entertaining one in game number two. Um, and then I don't know. So if you're Iowa State, let me ask you this question. Would you rather play Kansas State or Texas? Because I could make an argument either way. Texas is the higher seed. Uh, it would be a, a loss to them would probably look better. Yeah. Um, and I, I may I almost wonder if I'd rather play Texas because he's or Kansas State, like so you're gonna get their crowd if that's the case. You're probably gonna have Kansas's crowd to so ticket prices, you know, that'd be a thing on on Thursday night. But Kansas State just feels like such a desperate team heading into this tournament, and they just they play really good defense. And with Iowa State's offense right now, it almost feels like Texas would be a better scenario. Do you? What do you? Do you have an opinion on that? I agree. Uh, I hate to do it on all counts, but you know, Texas won three or four. You know, the one loss in that stretch uh, uh, played really well against Baylor, just got outscored. <laughs> I mean, Texas and, and DeSue, of course, that's a concern for them. You know, getting banged up, how, how healthy is he? But, you know, a top 20 offense, 55th defensively. I mean, Texas is a game that's going to – you're, you're going to have to go up and down a little bit. And if you're going to have a chance to get well offensively, this is a team you can do it, do it against, whereas Kansas State's harder. As a top 20 Ken Palm defense, they, as you said, they're mean, nasty. They try to do all those things. And, and again, as desperate as they are, they got enough shot makers. I mean, Cam Carter did some big things for them, obviously, in, in the win against the Cyclones um, on Saturday. And, 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 the, and like you said, it looks more like a bad loss. And, and as you also said, I don't think Iowa State could fall off the three, three seed line. As of right now, the, the last two seed uh, per Lenardi at ESPN, I'm sure Jerry Palm probably has him as a four or five right now, your pal. <laughs> but um, he's he's always an outlier that way, speaking of outliers. But um, I, I think Kansas State would be a potentially more damaging loss. And, and I, why why cue up that dog and pony show for a third time? You know, I mean, after – I don't want – yeah, that, I'm, and that's part of it too for me at least is just the drama and like I don't think that's conducive to anybody in the month of March and who's to say it would even happen I mean I'm sure both coaches would downplay it and stuff they just got done playing it's another thing though it's like one of the things that I think is very real with Iowa State's offense is and this is now the third year in a row we've seen it and it's better this year but it's not uh, it, considerably better this year. Again, they're the two seed in the tournament. So, like, to, to pretend it's not better is – but we, we've seen now this is the third year in a row where they just slow down offensively at this time of year. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they can kind of kick out of that like they did two years ago. Uh, you, you said guys step up and make shots, right? You think back to that NCAA tournament with Hunter and Kalsher and whatever. Um. But Kansas State just played you, so it's like a fresh scout. They know exactly what you're going to do, your actions you're going to run. And, yeah, I just think that Iowa State would have a better chance to beat Texas, but but what do I know? Yeah, as of right now, I mean, I, I, I think – I mean, if you looked at play them 10, 10 times each, I think Iowa State beats Texas six, probably beats Kansas State seven. But this is a one-game thing, and 
they're, they're going to feel good about what they did. They're probably going to try to replicate some. They probably won't be able to replicate a lot of it because Iowa State had a lot of just careless um, live ball turnovers that really, really, really hurt them. I don't think that there's going to be a repeat of that. I think the adjustments will be made. But, yeah, you can make an argument either way. I just like the, you know, for once, hey, the Texas name, right? Yeah. It, 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 you look at, oh, well, gosh, they lost to Texas in, in the Big 12 tournament. Okay. Uh, well, Texas has, you know, played pretty well. You know what I mean? I, Absolutely. Yeah, they can't get that damaged, but let, let's just – wouldn't it be more fun to be like, hey, play Tyrese Hunter again, see what happens versus Kansas State, and looking back to all the crap that, that came with that um, meeting in Ames. I, I think let's get Texas and hope to get a win and then see uh, see what uh, what happens from there. Hey, for what it's worth, I did do a little research here, and your guy Jerry Palm does have Iowa State as a three. So, okay, you 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 nailed it. He's he's bumped them off of the he's bumped them off of the two line. The interesting part of this bracket to me is what could happen if Iowa State wins. And so, let's assume here that, and I think this is a big assumption that let's say Cincinnati beats West Virginia and Cincinnati plays Kansas. I think it's a big assumption that Kansas even wins that game, to be honest, with the Hunter Dickinson. You know, that's in limbo now. But let's assume that it's Baylor, Kansas, uh, and Iowa State plays the winner on Friday at 630. From what I understand about the NCAA tournament process is you're more competing against these teams like when it comes to location. So – and. It's Iowa State, Baylor, and Kansas competing for Omaha. I think Kansas is in the back burner now. I, I really do. I think I, I don't know how anybody would put them ahead of Iowa State, regardless of what happens this weekend. Let's say it's Iowa State and Baylor, and Baylor has been bumped out of Memphis. They're not going to get to go to Memphis. the The one downside to this is that Iowa State, if you lose to Baylor twice. Yeah. And Baylor goes 2-0 and against you, and you're basically on the same seed line at that point. That's the one scenario, Rob, where I could see Iowa State getting kicked out of Omaha, is if you go 0-2 against Baylor on the season. Because then what argument do you have? Your, your, your numbers are basically the same at that point as far as how the, the selection committee is. So they, I, I'm already – I'm thinking big picture here and that – but if you win it, you're guaranteeing yourself, right? And then you, you know, so it's it's kind of in your own hands. But I, man, that's a that's a tough one right there because Iowa State needs to be rooting against Kansas and Baylor. And hell, I'd I'd much rather see Baylor go down than have to play them because that's a high stakes game. I think if you get them on Friday night. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, speaking of scenarios, would it be better to lose that first game rather than to have to? play Baylor or Kansas at Maybe. all. I Maybe. mean, as you said, with Baylor would be a second loss. Kansas obviously won a game where the, excuse me, where the offense was great um, at Hilton. Um, you know, I, I, this is a strange season because I've heard you and Bloom talk about, is it, what does Iowa say get if they somehow go and win a big 12 tournament here? I mean, they do solidify a two. There's no question about that. I mean, even mm-hmm. Jerry Palm would move them back to the two line if they did that, presumably. You think so? You think he maybe, would? Your guys, maybe. your boys? He'd think fondly. He'd think fondly about your conversations courtside there with the two. My guys. Uh, my guys. Sucking your view um, most of the game. Yeah, you but, can't even um, watch it. That's why I have my iPad and I'm watching. The, you can't even see the game. <laughs> but and God, God bless the cheerleaders. God bless the band. You know we love the, the whole – all the I had around, everything. this one very sweet cheerleader uh, came up to me and uh, she it was in the middle of the game and she yelled at me. She was one of the folks sitting in front of me and told me how much she loves listening to Cyclone Fanatic. Oh, I thought that was very kind of her. So we're reaching the uh, the cheer squads are, are are listening and watching right now. So hello. We're big fans of you. Yes. And yeah, now you, uh, the coveted uh, youthful demographic as well. Yes, so, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, so yeah, back yeah. to what we were saying. Uh, Jerry Palms got Iowa State as a three. Yeah, it it's a weird deal. Like I I wish Baylor was on the other side because 
that that's the one downside to this. It's like, God, it, you're just giving them ammo at that point. I, I think Iowa State even as a three will be in will be in Omaha. I really do. But I would think so too. Yeah. But that's how I've been. That's how it's been told to me is that you're not the two three three thing. Rob only matters in the sense is are you going to play a. 15 or a 14, right? Like where you are in the bracket. And that yes. and that's meaningful, right? There's more 14s that upset threes. Like we all know that. But that that's really what that means when it comes to the locations. And again, we're all hoping Iowa State is in Omaha. You're competing against these geographic teams. And Iowa State's two are Kansas and Baylor. So you want them to lose. And, you know, you can put – destiny into your own hands on Friday night, but I just don't trust that Iowa State can win two games down here the way that they're playing right now. I just I just don't. like I, I think that I, I have a much better feeling about Iowa State in the NCAA tournament than I do with these Big 12 teams that have them scouted. Right? Like, you... These, these coaches all over the place tell us you can't prepare for Iowa State's pressure, and that'll show up, but all of these teams know what it's about. Yeah. Right? Like, they, they're prepared for it where... You get to the NCAA tournament. I still think this team overwhelms a mid-major at this point. And then that second game, you're like, you know, you got one day to prepare for Iowa State, and that's that's really, really hard to do. Now, sure, Iowa State can go and do what they did against Pittsburgh last year, but I just think that I have faith that this team is good enough where, like what we've seen against – Oklahoma and BYU where you're not playing an A game and you still find a way to win it because you're talented enough. That's my hope for Iowa State. Now, having said that, it's March and anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. In a perfect world, Kansas wins. Uh, and, uh, you know, somehow takes out Baylor. I don't know. <laughs> or and let's say West Virginia. West Virginia has been – I know they got killed in their last game, but they've been playing reasonably well. And Kansas, like you said, with Dickinson with separated shoulder, they've been – obviously been very hesitant to play McCuller. Those injury issues and, and their bench being so thin and nonproductive, I guess you just got to play the cards as they're dealt. I mean, I, I don't see I don't see anyone beating Baylor. So if you're going to beat Texas, you're going to beat Kansas State, you're probably going to play Baylor and just say, hey, we're going to go out and beat them and, uh, you know, erase all doubt. That's not a no doubt. Or Baylor lately has won by outscoring Texas and by gutting one out defensively against TCU. And then a Kansas win, and, of course, they lost Texas Tech to close the regular season. Texas Tech really, I think, felt like they needed that one at home for their seeding. Um, so Baylor's tough. I mean, they've played especially well since, you know, the end of January. So. But that's I, that, that's how you want to play, right? You, you, it, this team, based on its daily habits, is, is, is supposedly created a, a, a group that's unshakable and 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 it's going to play tougher. Not every game, not every moment, but on balance, and um, that's what they've got to do here in the postseason. And might as well line up uh, every daunting obstacle along the way and and see if they can knock them down. I'll tell you right now. Uh... I'll let you make any predictions you want for the quarterfinals, but I'm putting Cincinnati over Kansas on Wednesday night and Cincinnati Baylor to play Iowa state or Texas or Kansas state. I don't really have an opinion on that game. Um, I just think that the state of Kansas right now, especially with this Dickinson deal, I don't even care what his diagnosis is it doesn't make any sense for them to risk that. Yeah. It just feels like the wheels are kind of off there. They've had all these injuries. Um, I'm not saying they're going to tank. I just, it felt to me three weeks ago, like self was load managing. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know what Kansas has to gain at all by gutting through this tournament and playing four games. I don't think they can for one. Yeah. But like, to me, if I'm Bill self, I'm getting my starting five as healthy as possible. Cause they're really good. Their starting five is, is right there with anybody. They just don't have any depth, but with five guys, it's a hell of a lot easier to 
navigate through the NCAA tournament than it is to go through a Big 12 schedule with five guys. So I think that they I think they lose to Cincinnati on Wednesday night. Yeah, I would not be surprised by that at all. And another thing, I mean, yeah. You know, as banged up and Dick as Dickinson and McCullough are, I mean, why would you risk them getting not only being 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 far down the list of not even close to 100 percent heading the NCAA tournament, but possibly just being done? Uh, I mean, one thing they could do is try to play all those guys that haven't given them good depth all year. Play a bunch of them. Uh, and, 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 and hopefully somebody pops and then maybe it's like, okay, so we lost to Cincinnati or we lost a, you're right. West Virginia is probably not going to do it, but I mean, they're, they're going to be considerably healthier. One would think. And then maybe you found somebody that can help you off the bench, which heretofore they haven't been able to do, but they're in a tough spot either way. I mean, I don't know how, when you're that thin, you can make a deep run. In, in the NCAA tournament either. But I think what you described for Kansas makes the most sense for them on multiple levels to um, just not try to lose, but to very much, you know, load manage your two stars and, and, and um, see how the, see where the chips fall. I'm going to take BYU to win its first two games uh, with a showdown with Houston on Friday night. Give me, Iowa State will bounce back. Give me Iowa State and Baylor in the semis. Give me BYU and Houston in the semis. Ultimately, Rob, do you think Houston? I kind of like they're another team where they could lose their first game and it and it doesn't matter. But I I think that Kelvin Sampson and Houston feels like they're on like a statement tour right yes. now. Like, don't call us the American team. You know, we're the best team in the country. I think there, you know, there's arguments to be made for, you know, UConn and Purdue's got arguments as well, obviously. But I, I'm i biased because I've seen Houston in person, and it was one of the most incredible watching them play defense. And Iowa State won the game, and I still walked away that impressed. Is it a foregone conclusion to you that they win this tournament? You think they're that heavy of a favorite? I, I think so. Now again, the 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 one thing that would be a cause for concern there is just how good but BYU is offensively. But Houston at times can be too. I mean, Shed is the player of the year, right? I mean, and they've got you know Sharp just killed Iowa State from three point range, and he's done it to others too. They seem to have a <coughs> a similar chemistry, a similar tough-minded sort of mentality that Iowa State does. And I think the bond between the coach and the players is similar as well. I mean, on paper, I would say the number one and two should probably meet. But I think this tournament has got enough wild card elements, you know, whether it be Kansas' injuries, whether it's be Baylor wanting to, you know, try to get to, 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 to play closer to home in the first couple rounds, um, that it's – I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Houston wins it, but I think even if the Cyclones are able to a win game one and then get by a Baylor or whoever, um, I just uh, I just don't see him beating Houston. I just don't. I don't think they'll get by Baylor. So I've got I've got Baylor in in Houston and Houston ultimately winning this thing. I actually in a in a weird way, just because of the crowd. Feel like I, in a weird way, I li- like Iowa State against Houston better than Baylor, and that doesn't make any sense because uh, I just Houston's been so good, yeah, right. And I think they're the best team in the country, but they've been so good, like they've got to have a bad game at some point. They've got to have a hiccup, oh, like Iowa State had against Kansas State this last weekend. So we'll see. Nonetheless, it'll be fun. This is one of my favorite weeks of the year. The best part about it is you look forward to next week, though, right? And um, regardless of what happens with Iowa State, they're going to be in a spot where they could make a run. They just – man, I just – 
they got to find a way to put a few balls in the bucket just for a confidence standpoint, even if you lose, recuperate. And I just wonder, too, it's like you get so stuck in the Big 12, and, man, the double buy was such a big deal for this team to get that, and I just wonder if that extra day, if the, if you do see some fresher legs coming up on Thursday night. We'll see. Yeah, certainly could. And I think, look, if Iowa State's going to make a run, Milan Momchilovic is going to have to hit yes. like he was hitting early. And I mean, we talked about for the Kansas State game, I thought maybe this is a game he can pop. He's talked about, you know, he's very um, self-reflective for a young guy. I mean, he'll talk about, you know, early in the season, a big, big time players make big time shots. Well, he backed it up a number mm-hmm. of times, but lately he just hasn't been doing it. And he recognizes that too. He has a self-awareness. And I wonder if that's gotten in his head a little bit. So hopefully they can refocus. The, the cliche is it's a different season. And then again, you retool after whatever happens in Kansas City. And that's a different season. Because I think his skills are so good that he's going to show up in, in these big games. And uh, Curtis Jones has been so rock solid. Double figures, 14 straight. Um, Taman's at times really been good offensively again. Um, Hassan Ward, I think, proves that he can be a different kind of matchup problem early, at least against Kansas State. So I like where this team's trending. I still think you're a Sweet 16 team where it's a disappointment for sure. Um, but, you know, you never know who you're going to run into. You never knew it was going to get hot. But defense usually travels, whether it be Kansas City or whether it be Omaha or whether it be who knows where um, in the NCAA tournament. But I like Iowa State getting back on track, regardless of what happens in Kansas City, and having a chance to make a really memorable run on the NCAAs. I'm with you, brother. All right, get down here safely. <laughs> we'll keep your seat warm in the media room. I appreciate it, my man. It's uh, I was thinking about it. It's RC Cola season. That's an inside joke at the here at the T-Mobile Center uh, for the fans listening. They they have some sort of weird deal. It's not with Coke or Pepsi. So all of the products in the media are like these weird off-brand sodas. It's the only time in my life where RC Cola is relevant to me is at the Big 12 tournament. When I was a kid and we would travel and you'd get a load up the station wagon and, and everything would be closed and you'd find a vending machine. I don't know why, because you always saw Pepsi and Coke. When I saw one that on RC... I love just pounding that thing, right? You want the RC in, Cola. Throw in the, God, this is how old I am. It's probably like 35 cents. Throw in the 35 cents. Listen to it go doop, 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 down. Boom, hit that RC Cola, ice cold. I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> Poor man's feels Coke like, and but I love it. Feels like a headache to me. I've always been a fan yeah. of the underdog. Yeah, you have been. That That's the most on-brand story you've ever told me. That, that robs the RC Cola guy. He's Rob Gray. My name is Chris Williams. We thank our presenting sponsors of all of our March coverage, Carl Auto Group, Country Landscapes, Fairway Meat and Grocery, Central States Roofing, and our friends at Keen Project Solutions. For Rob Gray, my name is Chris Williams. Plenty of coverage from Kansas City coming up later this week. Get down